What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Sheep Kid Sheared Podcast, where here we talk about people, politics, and popular culture. I'm your host, the one and only Austin Creed. My friends, welcome into the morning show. I know that this is going to be a little bit of a hard show to do, and I'm going to be very vulnerable with all of you on the show today. And so I hope it doesn't come across as, I hope this doesn't come across wrong. I don't know how it's going to come across, but you know, in the morning show is supposed to be motivational. And that's exactly what I want to do for you this morning, but there's a different angle that I want to take. And, you know, I was going to do the evening show last night. And for some reason, I was just having a really tough time last night. And then I came to realize something that I thought needed to be said more in the morning show because I thought it sat a little bit more with the morning show. They might be asking what that is. Well, I want to talk this morning about how to cope with sadness. Sadness is something all of us live with. I don't know of a single person alive who's avoided it. I don't know a single person who's never said the words that I feel sad or I feel down today. I don't feel right today. Something's just off. I know I'm not alone when I say those words from time to time, sometimes more than I would like to admit. But my friends, this idea of coping with sadness, there are burdens that all of us endure in life, whether it's you endure with just small bouts of sadness, or maybe you feel absolutely depressed majority of the time and those take on the form of physical symptoms that can affect your relationships your prospects your money your relationships with the people that you love but I'm here to tell you this morning that if you're struggling with sadness you're not alone in fact I would care to wager that all of us who are creatives whether we're content creators or not we suffer with sadness quite a bit and sadness if any of you have seen the the disney movie inside out it provides a very infantile level entry level i would dare say of the the emotions of the human condition that everyone struggles with and it kind of gave a persona to an abstract idea. But, you know, I'm not going to review, I'm not going to go the movie step by step, I don't care enough to do it, but what I will do is discuss that sadness is often seen as a villain. It's seen as something that you must avoid at all costs. Kind of, Kind of like stress, where you shouldn't feel stressed, but then, inevitably, you end up stressing about your stress, which then produces this downward spiral of complete loss and you you're stressing about your own stress it's kind of putting a hat on a hat and before you know it you don't know how you're dressed that's what it can do to you if you feel sad about being sad <laughs> that's the same thing as fearing your own fear it, my i know i'm not alone with understanding these feelings But if you're struggling today with being sad and it's crippling your creativity, it's crippling your next step forward, it's hindering you, it's paralyzing you like snake venom, you're not alone. But regardless of whether you're alone or not, what I would encourage you to do is what I tell myself every day. I'm going to take a step forward today. I would rather trip and fall backwards two steps while trying to take a step forward than stand in the very same place I did when I woke up this morning. Why? Because if I fall, my next job is to pick myself back up and now I want to run upstairs, not walk. Versus if I stand still, I'm going to feel bad about standing still and I'm more likely to question myself and repeat over and over again being stagnant and you cannot stay stagnant for long before you start to sink and before you and when you start sinking before long 
you've sunk to the bottom, and then you're going to feel bad about it. It's a never-ending spiral. That can only end one of two ways. One is you pull yourself out of it, or two, it puts you in the grave. And I don't want the... I don't... I'd rather be the former than the latter. If you've been paralyzed by the snake venom of life, usually called stress. Stress is the snake venom that paralyzes most people. And let me tell you, if you've been in that situation where your stress has been paralyzing you, take and own that. Because as soon as you do, it grants you power over the sadness, the stress, the instability, whatever it is that's you're suffering from this morning. Once you own up to that, it will help give you accountability and will help you cope. And not only cope, it will help you rein in, in your sadness like a wild horse being broken. In order to break the wild horse known as sadness, depression, anxiety, stress, whatever is bothering you this morning, you have to Take the courage to ride on its back instead of letting it run rickshaw over your land, the landscape and garden of your mind. It takes accountability because avoiding your responsibilities is a disease and before long it will infect your entire life and it will take you time to uproot and destroy that disease before you gain the determination and the ability to truly move forward instead of just dealing with your past. I want you to know that if you, you see this as an insurmountable task, Austin, you're asking a lot from me this morning. How the hell am I supposed to do all that? Well, my friends, I asked myself the same question. In fact, <laughs> more than I care to, to know, sometimes care more than I care to remember. I've asked myself that very question. How do I deal with this? Why in the world would I bother doing it? What, what do I do? Well, my friends, I don't know your exact situation, but what I do know is this. I don't care if you're 60, 16, 36, doesn't matter. You can always, always stop what you've been doing and start something new. All it takes is the will of a single man, the will of a single woman. That's all it takes. All it takes is for you to own up to what you've been doing and take control of what you will do. I know I make it sound very simple, very straightforward, and that's because that's exactly what it is. And the longer you push aside the reality of which I speak, the more you will tread water and before long your legs will get tired and you will sink. And I don't want you to sink. I want you to stand and I want you to move forward and stride and run the race and win. But it doesn't matter what I want for you. What matters is what you want for you. I guarantee you, I know some of you probably think this morning that all your problems in life will be solved if you would just be handing money, right? Whether the government hands you money, some mysterious relative you didn't know suddenly died and gave you money. And you think your whole life would be better. You'd be set. You'd be stacked. You wouldn't have to worry about it or stress ever again. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you believe that, it's a sign of that you've never had money. Because money brings with it more stress, more problems. And that is exactly why. Well, let me rephrase it like this. Let's say you're an aspiring farmer, right? You're not very experienced, but you have a desire to be a farmer. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself in charge of a vast array of different crops and land and animals that are all looking to you as their farmer. And it's your responsibility to take care of all of it. But you don't have any practical experience. You don't know what you're doing. You think you know what you're doing, but you don't. That's the equivalent of you inheriting a ton of money or a ton of assets that you didn't earn or that you didn't don't know how to manage. It produces a problem because before you know it, 
you're going to be making mistakes and before you're and it's not going to be necessarily because you have bad intentions it's going to be the exact opposite it's going to be you don't have the practical experience my friends analogies help the world make sense it helps give flesh to these fictitious examples or to these fleeting thoughts and i hope that that's what i did for you today my friends coping with sadness is no easy thing to do i know i make it sound easy and that's only because i've had to deal with the the deepest darkest parts of myself and i've come out of it not unscathed but scarred and it's because of that i can really speak on this issue those of you who don't know, I was in a mental hospital for 28 days when I was in the military. And I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the mental health industry. I learned a lot over the course of that month. And it's my goal to not just give people drugs, but to give them determination. Now, I'm not saying don't take doctor prescribed medication. What I'm saying is I want you to change your mindset. I want you to adjust your mentality so that you can take control of your life and not feel as though you are a passenger in the car that is taking you to your future. I want you to be in the driver's seat, not in the passenger seat or even in the back seat or God forbid in the trunk being taken against your will. I don't want that for you. But in order for me to try to, you got to help me help you. And in order to do that, you have to assess your life, decide what it is you want, decide what you've been doing hasn't been working, what parts of it maybe have and what parts have not, and you need to move forward. And of course, you're more than welcome to listen to this show because every morning I'm going to be giving messages like this. Now, please feel free to let me know in the comment section or you can go over to X, formerly Twitter, and find me over there at Sheep Get Sheared. And for those of you who enjoy this kind of conversation about self-improvement, personal development, it's my passion because I've had to learn all these lessons the hard way. And it is my goal that people learn from my mistakes because learning the hard way is very, very painful. And I don't want you to have to deal with that if you can avoid it. And the best way for you to learn everything that I have learned thus far is to pick up my book, my manual, my personal ma manual, Biblical Bachelor, which I will leave in the, the, in the description of the video or podcast you're listening to. That book, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of research and I dive very deep into the issues of personal development, spiritualism, making sense of the world so you can develop your own personal philosophy for yourself. I don't teach you what to think. I merely open your eyes to the realities of the world that might seem harsh, unforgiving, and something you frankly didn't know you needed to hear. But that's how I've learned to manage my life at the old age of reaching towards my mid to, mid to early 20s and I'm just getting started I know I'm going to learn a lot more as the days, months, hours and years come down the pipe but it is my fervent wish that all of you learn from both my mistakes and the people's mistakes around you so that you can get a head start in life because getting ahead will help you be better then your father and your grandfather and will honor their memory and every father wants a son who outdoes him or a, or even a daughter who outdoes him. They, every father wants his children to outdo him. That's, that's the reality. And it is my goal in life to outdo my father and that's a very high bar, frankly. And so it is my wish that all of you does the same. And that's why I wrote the book. That's why I do this show, because I want you to take responsibility for your life and be better than you were yesterday. My friends, please let me know what you thought about the show today. I hope it hits you very close to home and I hope it inspires you to be better because that is my goal. But in the meantime, my friends, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless America. 
Have a fantastic day and be better than you were yesterday. Peace.